black sweater. Well, are we looking like a floating head because I have black background and black sweater? I'm a floating head, whoa! Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you 10 Nintendo Switch eShop games that we think you should check out. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna show you five eShop games. Me personally, I'm gonna show you five eShop games that I recommend. And I've gotten help from my friend over at SmashJT today. He's gonna show off five of his recommendations. So this will be an exciting video, everyone. And maybe you will actually find a game that you want to pick up after watching this. So one game that I wanna recommend on the eShop if you perhaps are new and just starting off and I don't know it's a very very safe kind of bet to download this title and that is actually Super Mario Brothers very safe bet like I said everyone has it everyone has played it everyone owns it on their freaking 3ds and their Wii and their Wii U and like have rebought that game everywhere but in case you haven't and you still feel like this is kind of fun and stuff uh, it's a safe bet it's easy to pick up and play at any time. It's cheap, it's on the eShop, and it's my first recommendation. Uh, for many people, this is a title that you cannot go wrong with, yeah. So, over to my friend Smash JT. What do you have for me today? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Smash JT. Uh, Jeff, you're not on your channel right now. This is a collaboration. Oh. Oh, well, okay. I guess I'm on Urka's channel? I think it's Urcha. Urcha? Urcha Gaming? To be safe, let's just go with Irene. Irene, whatever. Okay. So anyway, Irene asked me to be on her channel to talk about some of my favorite eShop games on the Nintendo Switch that a lot of people have overlooked because there's been so many incredible games. So I want to give you guys a few of my choices as well. Probably the game that's most overlooked on this entire list is going to be Yono and the Celestial Elephants. <laughs> And assuming you guys haven't heard of this game or played it, it's basically a Legend of Zelda game, but instead of playing as Link, you play as an elephant. And the game was all made by one person, and he did an incredible job on it. I did a review on it for him and absolutely fell in love with this game. If you have not played Yono and the Celestial Elephants, it's definitely worth a look. There's block pushing puzzles, various enemies that you'll be fighting along the way, and different quests that you'll have to take to overcome the overall goal of the game. Yono and the Celestial Elephants was one of those few titles that actually left me wanting more after I finished the game. It was a ton of fun. Um, so, my uh, second uh, recommendation on the eShop is actually a game that has been out on the eShop for a long time and um, now there is a demo out for it. I want to recommend Implosion and the reason for this is because it's uh, fun gameplay. I don't know if it's only me but I really enjoy this kind of gameplay, like hacking and slashing through things and it's um, a little sci-fi, a little futuristic kind of touch on it. And like I said, there is a demo out so you know, you can start safe and download the demo and see if you like it. If you like the demo, like I did, you'll buy it. Definitely. It's very nice. Now, Smash JT, what do you have for me for your second game? Alright, if you somehow haven't heard of it by now, Golf Story is a must play. Even if you don't like golf games. I don't know how else to say this. Golf Story is an incredible role-playing game that mixes aspects of golfing with storytelling and RPG elements where you level up your character and have to go on different quests to get items for other characters and different little mini games. You can even do mini golf or frisbee golf or drone flying. This game has so many different options and so many different things to do in it that there's something for everyone with it. Golf Story is an absolute must play. My uh, third game that I want to recommend is a game that surprised me a bit. It is called One More Dungeon. Um, at first glance it looks like some kind of like Minecrafty kind of graphics, it's pixel work and stuff, but what made me interested is the way that the game plays. 
you are in a first person perspective, you can see your weapons. And I like that. I've already said that. It's something there that's really interesting to me. So that's why I actually bought this game. Um, I'm not particularly fan of the pixel thing is going on, like the Minecraft kind of look of things. And there's actually a well in the graphics that is actually a sprite. And it turns around when you're walking around it. <laughs> kind of funny stuff, but uh, the gameplay very hard game. I hate this game for it being so hard and I like this game because it's fun but I really want to get further into this game. It's frustrating and stuff like that so I've tried to force one of my friends to play it as a get further in to the game and like you can uh, kind of mod the game like in-game in the menus. Um, after you have played for a while you gather points and uh, there's actually no save system in this game. That is it's weird, isn't it? Um, if you die, you start over again at level 1. And the thing is, there are 10 levels and you have to find the exit on the first level in order to progress to level 2 and 3. And like, sometimes in the levels you find a random portal and if you go into them you can find and like solve a little puzzle. You can find an artifact that you can use and it will like majorly help you in the game further down the road like in the dungeons so this game is called one more dungeon i guess because uh, you get that kind of addiction kind of feeling that you really want to progress in this game and it's so hard for me i don't know if it's only me or something but i i keep on dying like i get to level two and i die and i get frustrated and like um five minutes later i'm picking it up again and start over and it's so much fun actually but it's so damn hard i recommend this game it's really cool it's not that expensive either it's really really cheap actually but um it is what it is it's not a big game it's more like a fun little thing that will annoy the out of you <laughs> So Smash, what's your uh, what's your next game? Thimbleweed Park! A lot of people haven't played Thimbleweed Park and it kills me every time I hear someone say, what's Thimbleweed Park? Is that a good game? Holy crap! Thimbleweed Park is basically the successor to Maniac Mansion that I have dreamed of my entire life. It succeeds on nearly every front of recapturing the imagination and nostalgia that the original Maniac Mansion on NES gave me. And yes, at the end of the day, it's a point and click adventure game, but the storytelling is absolutely incredible and the direction that the game goes is something that I would have never imagined. The game is so good that even if you don't like point and click adventure games, Thimbleweed Park is still worth playing. I'm sure there are people that didn't enjoy it out there, but I personally have yet to meet one. This game is incredible. I recommend to everyone Stardew Valley. It is a game that was made by one man, just like the elephant game that you mentioned earlier, Smash. So in Stardew Valley, you inherit a really old farm and you have to clear out the farmland and you farm basically and you grow crops and you sell them off for profits. You get to know the villagers and there is a community center where you can collect stuff and there's fish relationship stuff and you can get married and have kids there is this mine where you can fight enemies and it's really fun and addictive gameplay and it's also really relaxing and like everything is so good in this game and you really feel like Stardew Valley is the sort of valley that you want to live in it's very cozy and nice this game is so cute and fun and you can collect a lot of things that you can donate to the museum in the actual village and there's actually just so much charm to this game highly recommend it if you haven't tried it it's not expensive at all so this is a uh, must buy if it looks interesting to you if it sounds interesting from what I just said um, just give Give this a go, give this a try. That's what I have to say about Saudi Valley. The last two games I want to talk about are extremely similar sounding names, but completely different experiences when you're actually playing them. The first one I want to talk about is SteamWorld Dig 2. And this is a game I reviewed on my channel. SteamWorld Dig 2 does everything perfect as far as a platformer goes with experience and leveling up and being able to upgrade your weapons and dig through the terrain and find different directions to go while proceeding through a really interesting storyline. I personally love SteamWorld Dig so much that it was my favorite indie game to come out in 2017. 
So if you haven't played SteamWorld Dig 2, you don't need to play the first one, although I'd recommend playing that one as well, because that one's a great game too. SteamWorld Dig 2 stands on its own as an incredible experience. Okay, so the last game that I want to recommend to everyone, and I downloaded this game two days ago. So I haven't played it much, but the little I have played it, I know for sure that this is what I want to recommend. I was like, yep, this is something I want to include in this video. I've had my eyes on this game for a long time, ever since I first saw it, but I never really bought it because uh, when I bought the Switch I was like, no, I don't want to buy anything on the eShop. I want to have everything physical because old style school like that, but um, I've given in and I've given up. <laughs> Basically, I'm buying uh, eShop games now. Oh, really, a lot of them actually. So I'm actually buying a lot of eShop games, yeah. Um, this one is called Morphite and it is really low polygon kind of graphics. I like this graphics. And we're back to what I really like, what I like. What attracts me is the first person perspective of it. And I really wish there were more first person perspective kind of games on the Switch. They are coming, of course they are, but we have to play what we have by now, you know, if you have that urge to play first person perspective game. So, more fight. You have a scanner and you scan things on different kinds of planets around the universe. You have a spaceship and you travel around with it. And you can switch over to your little plasma gun and shoot whatever is hostile against you and uh, tries to attack you. Now, with these scans that you scan around, like the plant life and like the animals and everything, you just scan around stuff. You can sell the scans, you get uh, chunks, which is uh, like money, and you can upgrade your uh, suit, boots, stuff. <laughs> you can upgrade everything, okay? You can upgrade your spaceship and like weapons and a lot of things. Uh, if you upgrade your suit, uh, so that it is more heat resistant, makes you able to travel further into the universe to hotter planets that you couldn't land on before or like cold resistance and colder planets that you couldn't land on before so there are a lot of planets from what I've seen so far I'm really early into the game but I really recommend this game. I will probably review it at some point because I'm really fascinated by this game, it really surprised me. So Morphite wasn't expensive, so it was kind of cheap game. And I feel like it's a halfway to a full game kind of, with the content so far, I don't know. I need to play it more like I said. So Smash, what's your next game, your last game? Show me. If you combine the time on how much I've played this game between Steam and my Nintendo Switch, it easily surpasses any game I've played over the past two years. And for that title, it's SteamWorld Heist. And for those of you who are not familiar with SteamWorld Heist, it's not a platformer game. It has very little to do with SteamWorld Dig 2. It's a turn-based action RPG almost. This game reminds me more of Final Fantasy Tactics than anything else. And while it's a side-scrolling adventure game, it's still turn-based. And it does it perfectly. I had so much fun playing through this game all the way through on Steam that when I got it on Nintendo Switch for a free review copy, I actually played through it all the way through twice again because the game is so addicting. And while the camera perspective is very different from Final Fantasy Tactics, and the characters in your party is way smaller than Final Fantasy Tactics, typically limited to three or four, SteamWorld Heist is an incredible masterpiece that I cannot say enough good things about. So if you haven't played SteamWorld Heist, you're a big fan of turn-based action RPG games, SteamWorld Heist is a must play. Thank you so much for having me a part of this, Irene. Again, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Jeff. I run the channel over at Smash JT. I do reviews, I do overviews, I do funny stuff, I do crazy stuff. Let's be real, the only funny thing on your channel is when I tell jokes. Yeah, that guy thinks he's the star of the show, but I'm the person that actually does the talking around here. You sound beyond ridiculous right now. Whatever gets you to sleep at night, buddy. Anyways, thank you so much, Irene. I really appreciate it. So that was 10 Nintendo Switch eShop games that we, me and Smash, want you to check out. Did you see anything here that you liked? If so, leave a comment and let us know. We will answer around. We do that, right? So everyone, thank you so much for watching. I want all of you to 
check out Smash JT. Uh, he posts a lot of videos that are interesting about both retro and current gen and like anything gaming and also like other kinds of subjects and he's very talented and good to listen to. I really recommend everyone to check out his channel. Follow us both on Twitter, links in the description and um, oops. And uh, thank you so much for watching today and we will see you later. Bye!